A very good afternoon and thanks for clicking on to the Saturday edition of Hogan's European Outlook. Hope everybody is well today and enjoying their Saturday so far. This is of course the NEO for the past summer and early portion of the uh, uh, autumn season. And of course we've had a very negative NEO um, situation over the last few months here. Now there are several aspects that can be contrib uh, contributed to this. But one of the factors that I think has played a, a major role in this is the fact that the tropics have seen a lot of tracks, a lot of development in a you know an unusual situation really when you think about it. An El Nino um, summer doesn't tend to provide an active Atlantic. It tends to be more East Pacific and Central Pacific Ocean. You tend to have more shear across the Atlantic, particularly so across the Caribbean. You can see here this lack of tropical cyclone activity within the deep Caribbean basin here. And that, of course, is a lot to do with the increased wind shear that is developed in this region with the strong warming to the south. But the type of uh, hurricane season that we've had with 18 name storms, six hurricanes, three majors, uh, is the fact that we've had a lot of recurve and so we've had a lot of transport transfer of energy out of the deep tropics northwards towards the temperate region and i think this has played a major role in enhancing the negative nao summer early fall season so far and it's going to be very interesting as we go forward folks with regards to the nao and the ao now the arctic oscillation has been a little bit more back and forward you can see here there's um, periods of uh, positive, there's periods of negative. Arguably, there's more negative than there is positive. But I do think that uh, there is several factors uh, at play at the moment. Now, if you haven't already done so, be sure to check out the second update of the winter ideas that I'm producing. I'm building the, the picture here um, steadily with regards to the major drivers el nino indian ocean dipole uh, the warm um, overall planet um other factors as well all getting taken into consideration i'm kind of picking out all the little details trying to you know even provide a little bit of um insight as to what these um various drivers mean what to do and what influence they may may have on the atmosphere as well so there's a lot of work being put into that. The link in the description of yesterday's video for the written version of that, because it's actually essentially just I've kind of analyzed and read through the article that I've produced on marfoganweather.com here. Um, it isn't a forecast by any stretch, but it's, it's simply building the picture. And then once that picture has been um, has been put together, then we'll we'll go with a call we'll go with a prediction with regards to the overall winter there is competing um, factors they've taken into consideration the el nino exactly what type of el nino would get uh, versus the strong positive indian ocean dipole and other aspects all needs to get taken into consideration i'm very much sitting on the fence right now when it comes to this upcoming winter season here if we get a strong and primarily east-based El Nino, which that is still on the table here. I think we're going to have a generally warmer than average winter across much of the Northern Hemisphere as the jet stream becomes stronger, more zonal, floods both North America and Europe with mild ocean air, and it will be a similar situation to the winter of 2015, 16 and 97, 98 which of course were both super El Ninos. Now, if we get more of an, uh, a 2002 or 2009 type El Nino, then that's very different indeed. We'll have the focus of upward motion as explained in that video yesterday. If we get the Walker cell focusing, it's a uh, upward motion rising air over the central portion of the Pacific. That is a different story altogether. That then enhances um, you know, the ridge trough pattern a little bit different it, it cha changes the orientation changes the amplification uh, over the mid to high latitudes so there is a lot of complexity to this folks it's not simple and there is no point in me turning around and saying it's going to be this that or the next thing we simply need to watch and see 
where everything goes over the next month or so here. So update number three will be released sometime in early November. And then we will have an actual forecast sometime towards the end of November here. So something for you to look forward to. If you haven't already done so, be sure to hit that subscribe button. There, of course, is so much content here on YouTube and on MarfaGunnWeather.com for you to have a look at here. So, Man Julian Oscillation. Looks as if it's in a central Pacific mode, active at the moment here. Very, uh, well, it, it's, it's active, but it's not particularly pronounced here. There's not a great deal of amplification to this um, Man Julian Oscillation at the moment. And that has been the story throughout this year, really. We did, of course, see uh, a little bit of amplification to the active uh, phase of the Manjulian Oscillation through the Pacific in uh, June, July, more so July and August, actually. And that really kind of helped kickstart the El Nino, I think. We did see a pileup of warm water over the Far East Equatorial Pacific, but there was no um, relationship with the atmosphere here. We still had a bit of a La Nina-type atmosphere, but an El Nino-type ocean um profile here we're starting to see that couple a little bit more and we'll need to watch this space as we go forward but you can see here um for uh, yesterday 13th of october we've got a little bit of upward motion over the central pacific sinking central and eastern indian ocean here and we've got um, upward motion across the uh, the north atlantic at the moment as well here so what does that mean we've actually got a tropical uh, a major tropical cyclone over the west pacific here um and what that's going to do is it's going to be heading up into the uh into the north pacific here what that may have is influence in in buckling the pattern buckling the jet enhancing the blocking over the high latitudes as we go towards the end of this month and into early november here sorry about that so this is the latest run of the ECMWF here. So you can see deep area of low pressure north of the UK bringing very strong northwesterly winds, but it's also ushering in the first taste of Arctic air into the pattern. High pressure, strong over the North Atlantic. Got that deep area of low pressure that will slide east and that opens the door to cold Arctic air. Of course, it is not middle of winter, so it will have its limitations with regards to just how cold the air mass is. But the heavy rainfall clearing the southern half of the UK, as you can see here, and then that door opens up to those biting northerly winds during the course of today through tomorrow. And then eventually that area of high pressure topples its way in to the UK and that shuts off the uh, supply to the north. So we start to see a moderation in the air mass overall. Notice here, area of low pressure well out over the north of Finland, northwest Russia. By this stage um, later tomorrow that area of high pressure eventually starts to kind of regroup now watch what happens this is off the ecmwf it starts to go up towards scandinavia area of low pressure here then coming up from the south got some very messy conditions here but the 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 point of this story here is that we've got an area of high pressure that goes from north atlantic up towards scandinavia and we do have a little bit of an easterly component to that wind here. Nothing extreme, nothing, you know, particularly, um, you know, exceptional for this time of the year. But that will certainly have a little bit of cold air associated with it. And what I would be curious to know is, is this a little bit of a sampler as to what we may see later down the road? Notice here. Uh, with the 850 temperatures you've got that area of high pressure sent over scandinavia and you've got some fairly cold air by the way by even by mid-october standards that is uh, getting drawn around the underside of that high and then sliding westwards towards the uk and ireland here so that is rather interesting to see that's for sure according to the ecmwf now let's have a look and see what the gfs is showing is it showing the same thing? It certainly was yesterday, the last time I checked. Let's go back to the here and now. There's that cold air coming down from the north. Then the area of high pressure then kind of settles in, cuts off the supply of cold to the north here. And then as that high slides up towards Scandinavia, in comes the cold air around the base of that high. 
Now you'll notice here, it isn't quite as prominent as it was in the previous runs with regards to sending in an, a chilly easterly airflow here. Now the moral of the story is this folks, we have got the Mandrillon Oscillation coming out of the sleepy null phase, heading a uh, skirting phase 8 and then phase 1 of the MJO here. What does this mean? If we look at this particular chart, phase 1 is upward motion over the west portion of the Indian Ocean and also the central portion of the Pacific. Now if we look at this next diagram, phases 8 indicates northerly blocking a negative NAO type pattern cold UK winter of course we aren't in quite in the winter just yet phase one represents high over Iceland low over Europe less settled for the southern half of the UK and as you can see here if we go back to this chart that's exactly what we're seeing we're seeing that area of high pressure up to, towards Scandinavia and we have got um quite an interest in correlation at least between the current phase of the mandula oscillation and the type of pattern that the models are suggesting here as we go further uh, um, forward this is the current situation here so this is of course off the cfsv2 albeit it's slightly out of date i do apologize for that but we do have got strong blocking over northern uh, portions of north america cold trough over eastern united states We've got that positive extending over the Arctic at the moment here. And what happens is we've got that the uh, super typhoon that is running northwards. It's going to enhance the negative over northern portions of uh, the North Pacific. And it's going to recast the atmosphere here. Watch what happens with the ridge to the west of the UK and the trough over, um, over Scandinavia into week two. This is the change that takes place. We see that area of high pressure going with the phase 8 into 1 with that positive now over Scandinavia as opposed to the west. You've got a negative to the west-southwest of uh, the UK and Ireland here. We've replaced the negative with a positive over the North Pacific extend up into the northwest of North America here. So you can see the change taking place here helped by that super typhoon over the North Pacific. And then as we skip to week three, you can see here that the ridge retrogrades from Scandinavia towards Greenland here. This is a very, very interesting situation developing here, folks. And of course, this would be the period between the 27th and the 3rd of November here. So you can see the change taking place here. And this is what happens when you've got recurving super typhoons over the West Pacific. You've got a phase eight in the one of the Manjulian Oscillation. This is almost a classic teleconnection developing here with the CFSV2. Let's have a look and see what November is showing with the month um, overall here. And that is very, very interesting indeed. That is a cold looking look, uh, you know, type of, of situation for November, may I add, with the negative NAO, the negative AO, the Eastern United States trough and the Western Europe trough here. So we'll watch this space as we go forward here. There is certainly um, becoming a little bit more of a validity and trend with this overall evolution of the pattern. Now, as I've said before, I'm a big believer in repeating patterns. Remember what we've seen during the summertime with that negative NAO summer and all other aspects they uh, worth considering uh, considering as well so of course we've had that negative nao uh, during the second half of september through the first half of october and it looks as if the modeling is trying to hold on to this negative nao situation through the second half of this month so it's all to play for exciting times to come keep it right here on my youtube channel and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so Thanks for watching, enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you tomorrow with the all-important Global Weather and Climate Report. Stay tuned for that. Bye for now.